And I think we have a special hot topic to dive into. Ethan, you want to jump in? Yeah, let's hit it. Um, yeah, so today's sponsored hot topic features Rick Farman of Superfest. Um, we're getting all our fests out of our system today. Uh, Rick co-founded Superfly in 1997 and became one of the creators behind iconic music festivals like Bonnaroo and Outside Lands. After spending two years inspired by and participating in Web3, the time has come for him to see if the space can enable his career-long dream to have a community build a festival from the ground up. Uh, Rick, welcome to Edge of NFT. I'm really excited about to, to talk about this stuff. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. Glad to be here. For sure. Yeah, man. I mean, like we've been talking the whole show about uh, building community in the physical world, and you've been doing it your whole life through through festivals. And this is the first year for NFTLA, first year for Midwest Con. Um, and it sounds like it's going to be the first year for Superfest. Um, would love to sort of learn more about what your upcoming festival field trip looks like and how you decided to pull this off. Yeah, great. So um, as you guys mentioned, I've been producing festivals of all different types uh, for over 25 years. And uh, one of the things that I've really always wanted to do was kind of reverse engineer the way it usually works, which is that, you know, we plan everything as producers. We, you know, hire all the talent and get the venue set up and figure out what the ticket price is and all that kind of stuff behind the curtain. And then we put it out into the world uh, with the hope that anybody cares about it. And uh, we've had success doing that. We've had failure doing that, everything in between. Um, and, you know, in general, there's a good reason that things work that way. But um, as I've been absorbing a lot of what's going on in Web3 as an investor and a participant, um, it, it, you know, dawned on me that um, we could actually do things a different way. We can actually start with building a community of people who are inspired festival fans, who love experiences, who come to that stuff because the community is just as important as the art being presented and the relationship with the artist is, is something that they strive for a deeper connection with. And that we could actually start with that community and start building that community and start with artists who are like-minded and create um, hopefully what's uh, a little bit better than just a transactional relationship between the artists, the fans, the people who are actually coming to the event and using their funds to power it and producers like myself. And so that's really what the mission of Superfest is. Yeah, that's, that's, fun. that's it's beautiful. And, and like, I, I think when we talk about our event, we always talk about co-creation because whether or not there's a payment um, occurring for, for any member participant in, in this space, like fundamentally by you're voting with your dollars on what you want to create in the world anyway. So why not open it up to, to your fans as, as real, because they're already stakeholders, right? Yes, yeah, totally right. I, I've always thought it's sort of a little weird in a way that um, we use all of the fans funds, their ticket sales, right? to program in ways that we think are right, not the reverse of listening and getting information and really making those people part of the process of what the end result is. Uh, and so we hope by doing that, um, it actually creates a context for an even better commercial, a better artistic experience. In other words, that not all the decisions are being made based on, okay, well, are people going to buy tickets to this particular lineup in this particular place, but more coming from a standpoint of, all right, what is it that we as a community want to build and sort of self-fulfill that prophecy of what an event can and should be for a community. Yeah, that's really cool. That's, what that's very cool. Yeah, it reminds me of the history of, of, of media. You know what I mean? It's like we've been growing out of this idea of like, okay, it's on the radio. If you want to listen to it, this is what's on the radio. We put it there, right? And, uh, yeah. and now we have so much more freedom. Rob, I heard you kind of, you know, interjecting yeah. here. We'd love to hear your thoughts. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm curious. You, you bring up so many great points. Can you give us like a practical example, if, if you're able to at this point, about how you see 
fans, you know, specifically co-creating uh, with you for the festival, with the musicians, with the producer? I don't know if you've had any thoughts about how that would work in terms of your 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 co-creation with the fans who are holders of your community. Yeah. So the baseline stuff is is sort of the where and when and what of it, right? And we're going to be basically having the community uh, help advise and form all of those top line things. Um, and so, you know, we formed a couple different groups. Obviously, we have our super pass holders. That's our token, right? And so to participate in that conversation, you buy a super pass and you join that. We also simultaneously created both an industry an artist founder token that kind of sits at the same level as as the fans and so we've brought in you know i think right now we're up to 30 or 40 artists across music and visual arts and a whole bunch of industry people who have expressed interest in participating in kind of web3 projects like this to come together and basically submit proposals for things that they would like to have happen. Um, best way to think about this in some contexts is things that are sort of live at the creative level. Obviously, there's a lot of the operational stuff and the budgeting stuff that we as producers will need to sort of be a go between between mm -hmm. what the dreams of the community are, what the practical realities are of that, and how we need to interface with the industry. Right. Because there are some aspects of the way this is set up as an example, artist payments. Right. We're not going to be having people vote on what artists get paid. Right. That's going to be our <laughs> job yeah. as producers to sort of take a budget that the community decides on for artists and say, OK, well, here's how we're going to use that budget in a way that, you know, comports with sort of industry norms and things like that. Right. Yeah. But when you think about sort of how the budget is split up. We can we can engage in that capacity, location, timing, all of those things. One level above that, I would say, is just from a creative standpoint, is things like theme, right? Mm. Uh, what do we want each year to be the creative context by which artists show up at this experience and that they contribute to it? Because again, what I said before is is the case just for artists alike. We don't want that relationship to be transactional either, right? It's not just. Yeah you know, here, come and play to get paid X, Y, and Z, and that's it. It's no, no, we're, we're creating a context for collaboration with our community, with other artists. We're creating, a, you know, a context to do something creatively unique and different. And so the, the community can set the context for a lot of those things. And, and I think theme's a good example of one that's easy for people to get their minds around. Great. I, uh, I, I can only, you know, I, I almost can foresee, right? You know, when you give a community a chance to say something, they come up with those out of bounds things. Right? <laughs> You'd be like, what? Okay. And then the, it's almost like a challenge for the event organizers to implement it. Um, and just yeah, bring... like uh, some slip and slide action or something. <laughs> but it reminds me, we it was back during NFT NYC uh, back in 2021, I think, I think it was back in November, 2021. Uh, we ended up at this event, I think it was Creature World. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, this guy who probably, I don't think he had ever planned an event ever in his life before. <laughs> I, I don't know how much his community had a, a, a say in what was going on, but got, rented out this giant theater in New York City and basically had bouncy houses that were adult sized bouncy houses right so and and you know you could run and jump through and they had a line you could circulate through just just kind of be in like giant adult sized bouncy houses but it's kind of stuff like that right where where when the audience has a say they go let's do it it's crazy enough let's just we want you to try and make that happen and, and you kind of have fun then I, I suppose you know with that challenge yeah. and doing something new and interesting it was yeah uh, no doubt Right yeah, Danny Cole. That was Danny Cole. Danny Cole, Future yeah. World. Yeah, he's, he's, he's been around. He's been doing it. And and the community treasury, like, so how does that work? Like, with people being able to access it and how, how do you deploy, you know, capital from it? Like, what's that interaction with the community like? Yeah, so this is a recent announcement we made to decide to take 80% uh, actually of the funds from our mint and direct them specifically to a community treasury uh, where, um, any of that money being spent will have to be um, uh, a voted on proposal that uh, gets a majority of token holders, voting token holders to approve that proposal. 
And so there's a variety of different things that we already know the community is interested in doing. One program that we set up as kind of an initial, you know, uh, walk before you can run type of thing is a program called Field Trip. And uh, Field Trip's about uh, our community members going to scope out other events uh, together to get some ideas for what we want to create together. Um, this is something that comes from a long history at Superfly, my company, of uh, both uh, us as founders going to lots of events all over the world and also having a stipend at our business where, you know, uh, members of our team could apply and say, hey, I really want to go to this event because nobody at the company's been to it and we think it's a good thing to kind of get our eyes on and learn from. And so we wanted to extend that same type of program to you know, our, our token holders with the idea that they see something out there that they think is valuable to building this experience, they could go do that and they make a proposal to the treasury and say, hey, it's going to cost me, you know, $1,000 to go to this thing. And I think it's valuable for X, Y, and Z. And then people would vote on that. And so that's sort of the, the, the walking stuff, right? As we get kind of deeper into the process, you could think of all sorts of things that a community says, you know what, uh, we want to give out free coffee each morning at the festival. All right. And so we think that would be just a really cool thing to do that everybody gets free coffee and donuts in the morning. Um, and so here's what it's going to cost us to do it. Here's the team members, community members are going to support actually instituting this. Um, they're willing to put their time and money in, into it. And we're asking the community treasury to approve X amount of thousands of dollars to, you know, do that free coffee and donuts at the festival. Community votes on it, gets a majority of the votes that's where the money goes to it's that simple pretty cool yeah, sounds a lot more cool. fun than my condo association <laughs> <laughs> no field trips not a bad by context by the way of, of, of how to of how to do some things too maybe we'll learn some stuff i hadn't thought of condo associations as a, as a uh, proxy but uh don't think of my condo condo association. don't that's think of any condo group. association that's not yes. a good proxy <laughs> uh, I, I don't know jeff 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 has run a pretty efficient uh, condo association meeting in his day. <laughs> I got a few. I got a few I've been involved with, but uh, no, I think I think Superfest is where it's at. Rick, this is awesome, man! Like, super pumped about this. And, and I got. Really I'm excited. sorry, guys. I'm sorry. I yeah, got a bonus question for Rick. I, yeah, got a bonus I think this is going to be interesting. It looks like you have. Is that a record collection behind you, or like a man? Yeah. What, what is that? Uh -huh. Look at that. Tell us, man. It's give us, give us like a favorite from from that. That that looks like a very interesting record collection. It's a combination of my wife and mine's record collection. My okay. wife's is actually m m much stronger than mine. Yeah. Okay. Um, there's some great stuff in there. I what mean, would you put on if we were hanging out, just yeah. chilling in that that Pull room with you right there? Let's uh, pick out. I'm just gonna pick out a random one. Okay. Yeah. What you got? What do you got? What comes in? Ooh, Harry Belafonte. Belafonte, all right. Oh, nice. Belafonte at Carnegie Hall. At Carnegie wow. Hall. Keep holding that up for one sec Keep for the for the viewer so we can that spotlight awesome. it. Belafonte wow. at Carnegie Hall. Beautiful. I love a Caribbean, it. A Caribbean-based artist, like it was meant to the universe. I was my just going to say. Oh. <laughs> and that, I my, mother, to... my mother played that Belafonte at all of her, at the restaurant all the time. And so I know Belafonte, I'm a big fan because I had to be. So this is just wild. Uh, right, and we got we got very diverse music tastes in our house. Um, you know, my wife actually grew up uh, kind of around the record business. Her dad's on a record label for forty years and is a wow. like amazing encyclopedia of music. And obviously, it's you know very tied to my world and life. And so, um, a lot of different types of music being listened to in this house on a regular basis. I, I have one more bonus question. I'm sorry. This is Let's very quick. Yeah. So. Collecting records is obviously something that came back that people thought wasn't going to be a, a thing and it's now a huge thing, right? I'm curious if you see any type of intersection between NFTs and record collection when it comes to music in some ways. Do you see there being any type of opportunity for intersection there? Just, just a thought. Yeah, great question, Rob. It, it, it's actually very poignant because it's what made me understand music NFTs. I, I was having a moment of just like not in not computing in my mind of sort of the relevance of music NFTs. And I started to see how people were collecting them and talking about them. And it started to remind me 
of the second wave, what you're talking about, Rob, of the vinyl resurgence, right? Why are people buying a, a vinyl, you know, record of an artist that's on Spotify? When you can, you're a Spotify subscriber, you can listen to it all, but you still buy the vinyl. Why? It's because you want that collector's piece. You want that thing that's a little limited edition. And I think most people connect when they buy a piece of merch from an artist that it's more directly the money is going to the artist. There's not 10 middlemen in between. Exactly. Right. And so I think that's a very similar construct. And music NFTs, and by the way, something that Superfest has started to do actually as a group is start one of the things we're, we're you know, likely to use some of our treasury for, and we've started to do it previously, is to start buying music NFTs of some of the artists that are in or we want to be a part of our community to show that support and show that connection to them. And so I think what is really cool about the, the sort of NFT product as it relates to this is that you can do all sorts of really creative things that maybe vinyl pressing limited your ability to make, you know, only 50 of one copy or 10 special ones of out of a thousand that are randomly distributed or things like that. So I think there's all sorts of mechanics and flexibility that NFTs allow, but give people the same feel as you know, especially people who are digitally native, who sort of really understand and you know uh, see the value in digital ownership, um, I think there's a lot of things there that that you know NFTs enable music NFTs to to you know have uh, really interesting product uh, forms and types, and that's something yeah. you know we're going to be working on a lot at Superfest. One one other just quick thing to say about Superfest and what real way to sort of contextualize it. It's not just about putting on a singular event. Superfest is something that's going to be going on year round 24 seven. If you go into our discord right now, you'll see pretty regularly their performances in our discord of up and coming artists who are going into our discord where there's 10,000 people to perform for that audience and get feedback and engage with that audience. That is the festival unto itself. Superfest is a global community already. It's a community that's decentralized and a lot of what we're doing is gonna be de decentralized. Yes, we're gonna have a gathering where everybody comes together uh, and has that IRL opportunity, but that's not ultimately what it's about. It's about forming a community of people who wanna espouse and express the values uh, and, the, and the benefits of what you get from a community of people who love you know, festivals and who love music and arts and things like that. And so that's really what we're doing. And we'll be using a lot of things like, uh, you know, music NFTs and things like that to tie the community together. That's awesome. awesome. Yeah. Really cool stuff. Um, so I'll rein it in is when you get another podcast host <laughs> on your, on your show and, and, and somebody a, a little bit, a little bit, uh, right brain like me, we get off the rails a little bit, but next <laughs> we're going to transition to our next segment. Um, uh, in a minute here, was there anything we want to yeah. share? How do people can find out more Ethan, about you, Rick? Josh, and everybody you. wants to everybody wants to lead the transitions these days. Uh, I just wanted to, I just got to say, real quick, uh, we want to make sure that people know where to go, Rick, on your side to follow you, man, and uh, and we can direct people for uh, for uh, their interests who maybe aren't as familiar with uh, Superfest as we know are. Yeah, well, first off, our, our website and uh, and Twitter handle is all, you know, using the same Superfest name, which is Superfest with a three instead of the E, so S-U-P-E-R-F-3-S-T uh, dot X-Y-Z is the website and uh, at Superfest uh, with the three is the Twitter handle. Hop in there, you'll see everything you need to know. You can get your links to Discord and, and everything else. And we're currently still minting just for, I believe, another few days. We're about to close our mint out, form our founder community, and move on to the next phase of the project. So um, anybody who's interested in joining now is the time to do it. There'll be no really other opportunity to buy a founder pass except on the on the secondary market uh, come the close. Yeah, don't miss out. Uh... This is just a small glimpse, I think, into what the future holds for these guys. Really awesome, Rick. And uh, we are going to have a little giveaway also. We'll get the details uh, posted out on our socials. So keep an eye out for yeah. that. It's going to be something really special. And uh, yeah, man, hey, look, we really appreciate you joining. Yeah, Rick, right. I, awesome, I'd love man. to stay in touch too, Rick. I, I'll make sure the intro is made. Yeah, absolutely. All right, brother. Likewise. Talk, talk soon.